The Book of Puk Read to you by El Zorro Plateador Forward The oldest game in town is understanding the dance between men and women. If you're a man in today's world, you might need help learning this dance. So look no further than right here, The Book of Puk. I stumbled upon this collection of internet forum posts during the winter of 2019 and was immediately amazed by its depth and breadth. And as I dove into it, I was regularly awestruck by the wisdom it contains. So many times was my breath taken away. The Book of Puck fascinated me because it delivers real, forbidden knowledge in a manner so unusual these days. In a fable, one he wrote similar to the old Egyptian, Aesop, and his fables, but written for men in these confusing times. If you're wondering who is the actual author of these posts, please note that it is most certainly not me, though I wish it was. The author of this work is a mysterious man who posted this material on an online forum for picking up women called SoSuave.com. This man's posts under the name Puck were made between 2002 and 2006, after which he dropped off the map and his identity remains a complete mystery. You'll notice almost everyone in the pickup community is anonymous. Puck is anonymous. All the posting contributors to SoSwab.com are anonymous. Even I am anonymous. This is because the world of the pickup artist can be seen as unscrupulous juvenile, and manipulative. And so it is not prudent or safe to expose one's identity when talking about women in this way. These pickup artists are all men talking about the ethically questionable and sexually charged topic of picking up and handling women, including all of the techniques, philosophy, psychology, and sexual politics this crazy world entails. This is why you'll hear Puck interact with other anonymous posters from the SoSuave website. What is the point of all this? Why, it's for a genie called Puck to take a youth along his journey to becoming a Don Juan. The Don Juan is a mythical state of a man being completely relaxed and at ease with himself and anyone else around, notably women. This man's undisturbed manner is especially applicable to sexuality, masculine sexuality which, 20 years after these words were written and posted, remains a troubling and vexing topic. What's so valuable about the Book of Puck is how it takes the dance between men and women and places the burden, the weight, the work of the relationship back to where it belongs, on the man. The man is the problem, but so he is also the solution. This point is missed completely by feminism and by gender studies. Academics and intellectuals don't understand what it means to be a man, so we might wonder, how can they understand what it means to be a woman? Feminism loves to rail against the patriarchy. It loves to tell you how men and women are the same. Yet while men and women share great many similarities, they most certainly are not the same. The Book of Puck defies feminism and its concept of egalitarian equalism. Puck attacks what feminism has made, the plague it spreads, a horrifying and noxious, contagious disease called the nice guy. The nice guy is an intellectual virus, a psychological disorder afflicting many men today. Nice guys have become huge problems, not just to women, but to society at large, for they are the men who snap and destroy their lives and the lives of their family and of the many innocent bystanders around them. The Book of Puck, though itself nearly twenty years old now, lays clear the many downsides and toxins lurking inert within the psyche of the nice guy, and how to purge these poisons. How? By doing what you want, fearlessly, unrepentantly, masculinely. The purpose of the Book of Puck as such, is to challenge you. If you are a player, you will find it challenging. If you are a nice guy, you will find it even more challenging. If you are a man and identify as a feminist, you will find it deeply challenging. And if you are a feminist woman, you will find its challenge profound. 
What you'll hear now is my performance of this great work. To understand this useful and healthy material, note there are several sections of posts I have divided up. First comes the Book of Puk itself, which is a collection of fifteen lessons given to a young man by the genie Puk. Second comes one long post called The Secret of the Jerk, all about the connection between masculinity and testosterone. Third comes a cluster of posts that don't explicitly relate to one another, but are still exceedingly interesting and valuable. One section includes a series on the way women speak and use language, called Womanese. And fourth, at the end, you'll hear a long post that is a collection of aphorisms. Throughout most of this work, you'll hear references to other people posting to this website and Puck's responses to them. Let's begin for a minute or two with the man who collected and compiled these posts from SoSuave.com. Then we will get into the work itself. A note from the compiler. Well, seeing as I've decided to make this available to you guys, I should make a disclaimer. I'm not a Pook worshipper. He has flaws like everyone else. I actually disagree with some of the stuff I've put up here, but I want to read it anyway because it has value as a viewpoint. And hell, maybe I'll change my mind someday when I become wiser and pookier. Pook goes beyond simple seduction and takes us to the bigger picture. Life. Freedom. He's addressed some of the anti-Pook issues very well in the post I put in as the introduction. I think, simply, that when someone rises to such heights of fame in a certain group, someone will always come up and challenge him for the arrogance to be better than them, which in this case is completely imagined. Anyway, if you're reading this, you're hooked. So stop whining. You know we all love Pook at heart. Other than that, compile your own damn ebook, punk. Feedback appreciated. Buttercat.apocalypse at gmail.com.